Yeah, here we go, Lydia. A lot of people waiting for your levels. You've become a celebrity here. You're a celebrity at Forex Analytics. Thank I'm a big you. fan too, by the way. Uh, you are too, still? You're infamous. Thank you so much. Uh, not <laughs> you, <morning>. Stelio. <laughs> You're famous. Stelios is infamous. So, uh, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Uh, doing okay, Lydia. So, you know, before we delve into the technical levels, um, I thought that maybe you could give a, a definition or a description of what a hard Brexit would mean, not just for the price of the pound, but uh, economically for the UK, uh, explain to our viewers what a hard Brexit is and what the ramifications might be if it goes that way. Okay, um, so from everything I've been understanding over the past couple of years, um, a hard Brexit would be, I think, what we all imagined when the vote went through, and um, right. was would be like um, would be a leaving the EU. Um, so and and um, being a sovereign and everything that means. So you know, um, immigration rules would change. Um, trade rules would have to be rewritten. Um, with everyone, I think, I think with all of their trading partners and be um, completely, completely a separate country from the European Union and, and everything that would um, entail. And so as those economic realities came to start to roost, you have manufacturers uh, making decisions, you have banks and financial institutions now making decisions, um, needing to put an office within the EU as long as, um, as well as have their London office, some are just moving out of London or contemplating moving out of London completely so that they can be in the EU. Um, and mm. so as, um, and then um, you have different, your different immigration laws have to be rethought and how people move, people who work in the EU and live in, um, live in the UK and vice versa and how do people move so those things don't, um, are more seamless. So I think as those, reality started to um, be dealt with, we started to get the term soft Brexit. And that was, you know, um, well, we don't want to have maybe um, immigration may be separate, but we want the trade rules and the trade agreements to remain in place. Um, you know, and so we want to have different stipulations. We don't want the financial institutions to remove their center from London, but um, we don't want to have, maybe we don't want to have certain trade agreements in place. So that's when the soft Brexit term started to creep up, um, okay. when, when we started to realize, oh, a hard Brexit meant rewriting all the rules of engagement and all the labor. So, that so it would be too chaotic uh, and it would have financial consequences for uh, UK losing business to Europe, et cetera. Right. Et cetera, right. And, and therefore the pound got crushed um uh after the brexit vote and we right. haven't seen that low yeah. again right okay. we haven't seen that low again and yeah. um yeah interestingly enough we got a fake out to the upside because uh theresa may was starting to backpedal all of those hard brexit realities and i think the market has seen that maybe she sure. cannot achieve that and so we've seen the pound tumble along with trade wars just in general and tariffs helping to um helping to underpin risk aversion in the market which is why the dollar is just blowing through the roof okay so uh, a lot of people are calling it 60 40 50 50 what does that faith might uh, think the odds are of a hard Brexit? ah oh i don't like doing fundamental all and right. So don't put me on the record on this. Um, oh. I think I. You have good I think intuition. It's all or nothing. Yeah, I'm with the 50-50 crowd. I think okay. it's all or nothing. I don't think they can get have their cake and eat it too. I don't think the EU okay. will allow it. Yeah, that reminds me of that. I think it's a, it's an Ameritrade commercial <laughs> where it shows a couple brokers, Lydia. You know, they're sitting in their office. They're you know. They're full price brokers and and uh, you know Ameritrade's showing trades for four ninety nine plus they get to talk to a broker and one guy says full service at discount prices it just doesn't seem fair it's like having your cake and eat 
<laughs> two. Anyway, uh, I'd like to uh, move to some technical levels that you have right. in mind now. So um, to me, it sounds like um, you're kind of negative here, but aren't we due for some type of, you know, rip your face off type of bear market rally I mean, cable. long long overdue yeah. <laughs> i've been waiting okay. for it since we were um since we broke below um a dollar 30 right um a dollar 30 so all of this congestion congestion in here below 33.50 above a dollar 30 um i thought we would get that fine uh, finally get some kind of correction to the upside and um and yes it's been I don't know, several weeks, it's been months. It's been like three months and we haven't had a correction to the upside. And I know a lot of traders are, you know, want to keep selling, but I'm going to just repeat. And I said it again last, a couple weeks ago with you, cable always corrects, the pound always corrects. So now that we've hit a lot of these major levels, I mean, and we haven't seen um, this follow through. This is um, this is decent follow through. So I don't know if anybody remembers 2750. That's this bolder support line here. We were yeah. we were trading uh, at that level um, here when we made that 19 119.50 and started bouncing. We couldn't break higher. So we were here. We've been here for a while, and I think a break below this level is actually quite significant um, development for the pound. Um, I also think that it is long overdue for a correction so i would be a little bit wary here um just drilling down i like the action that we've had this was last week's a fib over last week's action so the spike into here um i think this was after um uk uh cpi and then us dollar retail sales which took us lower um so you know nice spike into the 38.2 and now um, a break of that support level follow through to the downside. So I like the the price action is clearly very bearish, but just to come back to the daily chart, I do believe that we get a correction of this downturn. Um, but because it's been three months, it might be that we actually correct from the congestion area. Maybe it's gonna look like it's more in here Whereas it takes us back to a dollar thirty, you know, dollar thirty, thirteen is okay. fifty. Um, so old support, I, old support becomes new resistance. Exactly. Any exactly. Rally so we have the yeah. confluence there, um, there, and all, the sixty one eight hits on some of these lower highs, and um, that's where we want to pay attention to a dollar thirty one, um, which is the six one eight here, because then that would get us into. Um, I'll just delete it real quick, a move, a, a correction of the overall move, which would be a much healthier correction, which could see a downside move then start to move um, um, more significantly below $1.2775. So that's what I'd like. I haven't been positioned in the pound. Um, I've been in the euro pound, to be honest. So I've just been watching these moves um, pretty incredibly because I've I've been wary of the downside moment uh follow through without a uh, without a sizable correction happening okay so, well that's a that's yeah. a great segue into euro pound that perhaps a weakness in the pound is due to all we had was a one week pullback in eg and now it looks like it might uh uh be back on its way again it held that 89 level and maybe it's because euro is going to outperform like it has been since you know april I know, I know. Maybe and maybe there's another push up uh uh in uh, euro pound if this 89 level holds and we If this no 89 so I'll put another caveat to this 89.50 level if we can get above yeah. 89.50 here. So looking at this um you know we spoke about this uh possible move if yeah. it's a break of this 89 like this possible move to 90 and it, right. and it materialized um to the to the pip or that 90.15 there on the on the extension, but if we just drill down into the 240, so this is what I'm looking at now. Oh, let me go back. So it's a little difficult to see, I think, but I can zoom out here. This move here that took us from 88.50 to 90.15, this right. move or 90.30, this move here corrected what well, this past week um, or last week and 78. opened. And yeah, and moved, it moved us um, and broke nicely below the 61.8. So okay. for me, 
to me, that was a signal of a of a reversal to the downside. But we got, um, like you said, 89 held, which is something I can, when, and this is what I tell, I say all the time, right? If we get a break of a level, don't chase the level, wait for the bounce back. And that's what this bounce back here does. So a bounce back into that fib, but I draw, instead of when it's a fib break, I like to draw a fib on the downside move. And so looking at that, today's rally, last week, or yesterday's rally, and even into today, has taken us right into the 50% line. We need okay. this 89.50, which is 89.62 here, but 89.50 in general, if you look at on the weekly chart, those are some highs that we need to kind of stay above if we're going to see follow through back into 90 and higher. So okay. I'm looking at this move here as a possible move to the downside to kind of get us lower after a break of the 61.8 there on the daily chart. Yeah, it's going to so, look kind of ugly back under 89, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. Uh, the one yeah. thing that makes yeah. me think that there could be a charge for new highs uh, is the RSI at the high was a confirmed high on the four hour and the daily. So there was no divergence up there at the highs. Now, you know, markets can yeah. turn on confirmed highs, but it's not a high likelihood. Usually they turn when momentum is no longer confirming the new high. Exactly. You're right. So, I mean, that's yeah. one thing that, you know, always pops into my head. Do highs and lows confirm or diverge? So, okay, uh, uh, that's Euro pound. Oh, you want to yeah. show the 240. Go ahead. Yeah, no, this is uh, this is just a look that I want people to keep in mind, especially if RSI is confirming um, and we had a break of the 620. Oh, yeah. This yeah. level, if we can't stay above, if we can't get and stay above 89.50, um, we're going to see more more movement to the downside, which really doesn't negate your view, Dale. Doesn't negate your view. You know, we could still, yeah. you know, momentum is still bullish, um, and it could be we could see what kind of follow through we get below 89. But I think you're right, below 89. We see a move into 88. Yeah, 50. I think it changes. Then it changes. Then I right. say, the hell with the confirmed high. <laughs> if it takes out 89. So, uh, how about uh, Guppy with this yen action's been so choppy? Um, it's mainly been led, this Guppy move has mainly been led by pound weakness and mm -hmm. it's been sideways. So, uh, what are your thoughts here? Um, I, I, like this move into 140. And so this was the move um, that when we spoke last, this was the kind of the last look that we had um, where we had this uh, failed low and it gave us a new high, but it was still in the correction and we got the break. Um, even if you draw the fib on this, this was a nice fib move um, into the, I think it was the 50. Yeah, you know what's well, funny is you were right about this move, Lydia. And it's happened to me a million times. Like you said, you know, I don't trust the yen. So you thought uh, part of the big reason for the decline was going to be U.S. dollar yen weakness, but the trade still worked. But it was so pound, pound weakness. weakness came out of nowhere. It didn't, yeah. It didn't, yeah, it didn't matter. <laughs> I mean, you were still bearish, and that's funny. You could be right for the wrong reason. Yeah, yeah, which is why we cool. always the technicals <laughs> and not the fundamentals. Like we yeah. try to, you know, that's why we use the technicals because it was off this weekly chart. This weekly chart was saying, okay, we have these failed, a failed high here, and we yeah. have another failed high. We got to move um, lower than these lows at 144, um, and that would bring us into the 50% line. 140 is right there. So that's, that's what technicals are showing us. But yeah, um, you know, I was looking at, um, equities as well and thinking that the yen couldn't gain much strength as long as we were s p was above 2800 and so i yet here we are um and only because you know the the technical show differently we had this move um into the fibs and when we had this nice bounce here and held below um 147 i mean who anticipated this move was going to keep going to 140. i anticipated it but you know um it's a nice looking move. So I think what is interesting with a lot of these other pound pairs, not the, um, the crosses, like the um, Aussie and the yen is on the weekly chart. They're hitting up against these 50% levels. Whereas on some of the other weekly charts, like the pound dollar, we're breaking and we're, we're signaling reverses, um, reversals and possibly more pound strength. So I'm interested to see what the crosses do 
Um, I think pound strength is still very, you know, much in the market. A lot of these pairs could bounce. Um, just jumping to the Aussie really quickly, that's what's happening here. It's a hit on this 50% just below and, and the support level, and we got this nice um, bounce right now. But I think that there's still plenty of pound weakness in the um, in the market. And so um, especially want to kind of take a look at what, if that sentiment holds and we just get momentum as traders start to come online after the Labor Day weekend, which is just a couple of weeks out now. So yes. these are things I've just kind of, you know, um, don't pile in to all these moves quite yet, especially as we're waiting for some of these bounces to occur. Um, yeah, ne next year, let's do a live broadcast from the Hamptons with all the hedgies. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it from the beach, Lydia. What do you say? We'll say, hey, guys, look, uh, we're in FX. We can live large, too. Right. We don't need a billion dollar uh, <laughs> mutual fund to manage. So, um, all right. <laughs> so uh, that covers uh, the commodity currencies. I was just going to ask you on the guppy, um, mm -hmm. would you look to sell rallies or buy dips in it here? Um, I would actually look to sell rallies. Like and to 44? Or you think it has that much in it? Yeah, well, let's look at it. This is where I would be looking at it. Yeah, okay. 143. Yeah. Okay. All right. So no, mm -hmm. nothing counter trend there? No. I mean, I, you could, you know, quite honestly, because of the weekly chart look, um, and because we're in this 50% zone on the weekly, yeah. Um, you can make a counter trend move here at the lows. Um, I would like to be closer to 140. We're at 140.60 right now, but you could take you this low. It. I mean, your risk is very defined. Yeah, your risk yeah. is defined. You want to be, you know, up under 140 with your stop. Uh -huh. And yeah, you could take a, a, a 200 pip rally to the upside. And um, okay. it, it, look at this 143.50 is our former low here. So yeah, of course, you know, I like corrections. So but this would be a great place to set up short. It's just harder to catch a counter trend move. That's all. Okay. So, that, that's so my, Manny, Manny is asking, uh, Lydia, when you see, uh, say, correction, do you mean a correction up or down in the pound? I'm not clear on this. Um, okay, so it would depend on the pair. So the a pound. correction in the pound would be yeah, to pound the dollar. upside. Yeah, it would be to the upside. Pound okay. dollar would be to the upside. Like So all like right. the euro pound, that would be... Right. Right, the correction would be to the down, no, to be to the the upside, which is what we're in now. We're in this okay. correction right now, so okay. for the year now. So yeah. this move here is a correction of this downside move. So okay. I tend to speak in terms of pairs, but yeah, in the pound in general, a correction would be to the upside. Okay, um, Lydia, uh, why don't you take this time to um, strut your stuff and show your website and let the viewers know what you do. You you have a few different models. Uh, yeah. you, you're a registered investment advisor, and I think with this volatility, uh, people would be in good hands with you because I think traders also make good long-term money managers because they have to be so disciplined with their short-term stuff or they end up going away. Um, that it's almost easier for them to make uh, intermediate term decisions. So go ahead. You with me? I think we lost Lydia. Journey. Um, oh, there. And what kind of mentorship coaching you're needing? Okay. And then the invest with Lydia is the link next to it, and that is the RIA that I am happy to be a part of. Um, I'm also an investment advisor. Um, we do traditional um, asset and wealth management, but we also um, talk to, well, I ha actually have some traders with me. So we, we do look at the Forex market as well and what um, how they can look at the, the foreign exchange market to kind of discern some um, investment possibilities um, in other asset classes. So yes, you can, um, this is just the easiest way to to find me and find my services, of course, on Twitter, um, at Faith Might, um, and follow me there uh, as well. And uh, thank you so much for having me. I, I really enjoy um, coming on and, and sharing um, charts. It's it's okay. you know it's, it's easy. Well, 
you have a lot of you have a lot of fans here and people are you know would miss you, you if you so didn't much. so you know why don't uh um i'm actually scheduling for october let's get something set up there um i'll be taking a few weeks off after this week and you talk about everyone well coming deserved. back out. Good. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, well, you know, recharge, uh, I'm glad recharge to my, my battery. My last I, mean, I think you're one of the few of us who just go 365, Dale, so. Yeah, I, I have been, yeah. Well, I don't know. I was in the hospital for a week four years ago. Oh, no. But that's not really a vacation, is it? So, uh, no. anyway, <laughs> thank you so much. getting a real one in. Good. Yeah, thank you, Lydia. And, uh I uh, hope pips continue to rain down on you and Thank people you reach out to you and learn from you and let you manage uh, some of their uh, lower end of the pyramid, not just their spec funds, but their nest eggs. And yeah. I, know you, I know you'll be careful with it yeah. and uh, appreciate our relationship. So thank, thank you again, you. Lydia. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. All right, everyone. That's a wrap for Thursday. Good hunting the rest of the day. We'll see everyone for TGIF. And most of all, my trading warrior brothers and sisters, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. See everyone for TGIF tomorrow. Thank you, Andre, for filling in this week, and Grega. Thank you, Blake. Thank you, Stelios. And Steve, get your butt back from that exotic Greek island. See everyone tomorrow. Adios. See you, Lydia. Yeah.